welcome to Trigger's 2014 review and 2015 preview. We'll be taking a look at the US dollar, gold, and silver. We'll start with the US dollar and where the market was sitting back in the spring of 2014. It had been bouncing around the purple channel for quite some time, more recently holding at the bottom channel support. There's also a potential ellipse pattern unfolding, offering us target considerations if it was respected. Gordon's macro bias was indicating positive pressure, suggesting we would see the market hold the technicals and lift. If, however, the technicals failed, we were watching for a potential move to the high probability target zone or HPTZ and TX. Seven months later, we see the market respected the technicals, lifted according to Gordon's macro bias, and moved to the high probability target zones identified at T1 and T2. Testing the ellipse at E1 and E2, gave us clues that the pattern would hold. We can also see the market respecting previous market levels and hitting smaller targets as it moved through the ellipse. With the technicals and the macro bias placed far ahead of the market, we are able to see the potential lift well in advance and call exact targets for both price and time. This was a great call and it demonstrates the power of the high probability target zone methodology and Gordon's macro bias. You'd be hard pressed to find a better market roadmap. We'll now take a look at the recent market action, starting with an extremely long-term view of the weekly time frame. I'm starting with a long-term view so that we can see where the technicals originate and their significance for when we zoom in closer on a smaller time frame. The black trend line or support and resistance, SR for short, B1 that starts at the top left of the chart shows the market in a wedge pattern and the market has just recently broken out of this. There is another black SR at B2 that the market is just coming up to now. And you should also note that the blue SR BL1 that has previously had significant market reaction. Note the two ellipse patterns. The second is a copy of the first and moved over and slightly down for a best fit. What is interesting is that we seem to have an almost exact mirror image occurring. If this continues to be the case, then there is a potential to see the USD at $145 sometime in 2018. This is what is technically possible, not necessarily what is actually likely at this time. Just something to be aware of a potential possibility. Also note the market in the red box. You can see the market touching the ellipse edge, then moving to the black SRB2. The market is now near SRB2 again, and we can see another pullback to the ellipse edge. Also note that every other time we have seen the market touch B2, we also see it touch an ellipse edge. Take a closer look at the market now. Note the X on both charts, as well as the technicals we discussed to help orient them. The significant SRB2 we have just been discussing can be seen along with a potential target at around the $94 level. Previous touches of B2 have actually had some overshoot, so this should be used as an approximation. What we are looking for is potential reversal patterns or other warning signs around B2 that would indicate the market is going to once again fall off from it and potentially move back to the ellipse edge. If we don't get a reversal around B2, the next significant technicals can be seen around $97 and $98.60. The market is long overdue for a significant consolidation or pullback. It has recently broken from the red channel, and going back to retest this would be normal market movement. The wedge pattern SRB1 could also see a retest, as could the significant blue SRBL1. We can see multiple technicals coming together and giving us targets around $87. As we have also noted, a more severe pullback potential exists back to the ellipse edge. It should be noted that Gordon's macro bias are done independently by him without my charts and is based solely on his macro research. It is interesting then when I overlay his bias on my charts and they seem to line up. Note that his macro bias for the USD turns negative at the end of February and last that way until September. His reversal zones H and I fit perfectly with the drop from the market off the target on B2 and a retrace to the confluence of technicals seen at the HBTZ on BL1. It will be interesting to see if we get the correction that is being indicated and if so at what level it comes from. The W%R sits at the upper extremes and can help warn a potential weakness if it drops back below negative 20. At this point, it still indicates positive pressure and more potential lift to go. 
technicals provided by the HPTZ methodology give an excellent market roadmap and allow you to follow the market from one to the next, regardless of how it is going to move. We'll now move on to gold, starting as we did with the US dollar and taking a quick look back at 2014. In the top left we can see a chart from the beginning of January, with the market having just landed in the target area at A. In the top right we have a chart of the market as of February 11th. The market has lifted from target A and moved into the high probability target zone at B. The bottom left chart shows the market on March 20th. It is lifted from the target B to target C, ultimately finding resistance from the significant red SR just above. In the bottom right chart from April 1st, the market has fallen off from C and dropped down to target D. Also take note of the technicals that are used to locate the targets. These set up natural trigger considerations as the market moves from target to target. For example, if we look at the chart for March in the bottom left, we can see a moving average as well as the bottom of the grey SR zone that need to be moved through for the market to reach the target at D. As the market fell off and broke each of these technicals, they offered opportunities for consideration based on your own personal preferences, risk tolerance and style. They set up an accurate roadmap that can be used as a backbone for any type of trading or investment strategy. Previous charts followed gold from the daily level for the first few months in 2014, leaving off in April. This chart is also from April, but from a longer term weekly scale. Point A is labeled, and it is the same A we started with on the daily charts. We followed a market lift from point A and then a slight drop, which can also be seen here starting from point A. Target Y was the bias at the time, and has been since the initial drop off in 2013. As well as the targets, also take note of SRs 1 and 2 and the significant grey SR zone. We will now take a closer look at the weekly chart and a preview of what we were watching for in 2015. Note the target at Y and the market just dropping down to catch the right hand corner of the high probability target zone. Ten months later and the market has moved to the area indicated. Looking ahead we can see gold is coming up to the red channel resistance. This and the SR zone above should be watched for a potential reversal for a continuation of the channel. Breaking up through these, we can see a potential significant move from gold as it lifts to reach the next technical. Note that Gordon's macro bias is indicating positive pressure. The W percent R is also in the upper extremes, suggesting positive pressure and more lift potential. Breaking back down through the negative 20 level would warn of potential weakness coming back into the market. If the market does continue to lift, SR2, the grey SR zone, and SR1 are the next significant market technicals to watch out for. Although it would be a major market move to see gold lift back up to these technicals, until they are actually broken, the market is technically still in a consolidation. Once these have been broken, however, we can start to call the move a reversal out of the consolidation and a resuming of the trend. It should be noted that there is still potential lower moves from gold. There are several technical reasons, one of them is a possible Elliott wave count. The count from the drop could be said to be currently in wave 4. This would mean that we still need another wave down, wave 5, to complete the count, and we could expect this move to be at least as long as the initial wave 1. If this is the case, we could see the market move to the next significant SR zone, blue, as indicated on the chart. The key will be watching the technicals, which ones hold and which ones are broken. When this occurs, we can then follow the market to the next potential technical, as indicated by the market roadmap provided by the HPTZ methodology. The final market we will take a look at is silver. We started following silver in April of 2014, and this is what we were saying at the time. Target at A was next in line, and we were expecting the market to move to this. From there our bias was to continue down and move into the HPTZ scene at C. There were several reasons for this, one of them being a larger wedge pattern, which can be partially seen from this perspective and the market moving to the pattern support. If however the market were to lift, High probability target zone B is where we were seeing a likely move to. While targets can be identified with accuracy, direction is never a guarantee. While we have many different tools at our disposal to make reasonable assessments, 
indicators, patterns, and other methods. These can all fail. By identifying targets both above and below the market, and allowing the market to show you the direction in which target is likely, you can then follow along with what it does, as opposed to guessing. This is accomplished by using the technicals as potential trigger considerations for entries, exits, and stops. In this chart, I had marked what I believe to be the significant technicals to consider if broken. You can see these highlighted in yellow. If either of these were broken, I felt the odds were then high that the market would move on to the next target indicated up or down. Note that there is also other nearby technicals that could also be used and these allow for different technical trigger considerations depending on the own risk tolerances. Here is silver as of June 23, 2014. Since April the market dropped to support, moved over to HPTZA and lifted. A target at A1 can be seen that was added to the daily time frame as the market unfolded. Looking ahead to November, we can see that the market lifted to the target at A1 and then promptly fell off and moved directly to the HPTZ at C. Recall that this target was given in our original chart from April 8 months prior. Here is the current silver market as of January 17th. In a previous report on silver, I had noted the significant SR2 and a target of around 1430. If you look closely, you can see a quick spike from the market reaching down to touch SR2. I make note of this because there is still a chance you could see silver go back and retest the support at some point, and you should be mindful of the possibility. Technically, however, we have had a touch of the SR and could therefore see more lift from here. Note that Gordon's macro bias is indicating positive pressure for silver until September. The WSR is lifted to extremes, also indicating positive pressure and lift potential at this time. Dropping back below negative 20 would be a warning of weakness. SRs 3 and 5 have held the market in a wedge pattern since the end of 2012, and the market is currently sitting against SR5. Breaking SR5 would be significant, as it would start to indicate a possible break from the wedge pattern. Note, however, that there are still a couple more significant technicals that need to be moved through before the market can be said to be breaking from recent patterns. There is a significant grey SR zone that recently held the market, as well as a channel from SRs 3 and 4. Once the market has cleared these, then the likelihood of a market reversal and more lift increases. Note, however, that it is also normal for the market to go back and retest significant technical breaks, and some volatility with this could be seen. If the market does continue to lift, then SR1 at the top of the chart becomes a potential possibility. Previous market levels can be seen, and these along with other technicals offer trigger considerations as they are moved through. If the market falls off and breaks through SR2, the next market levels below can be seen with a potential for a move under $10. One more thing before you go. If you haven't already, you should download a copy of the PDF of this report. PDF download link should be found right by this video, or you can get it at triggers.ca. The PDF report covers just what you have seen here in this video. However, the PDF also contains links to live charts of the markets we have been discussing. I will select the silver daily chart to show you an example. This symbol links to a live chart of the market at TradingView. Once clicked, you are taken to TradingView website and the current market chart. Note that it is dynamic and can be resized and moved around. This video is coming out almost two weeks after I had done the initial PDF report. And we can see that this is the chart we were just looking at, and the market has since just pushed through SR5. As I noted, there are still a few more significant technicals that need to be contended with. This live chart feature can be found in all our publications and allows you to check the current market against our technicals at any time in the future enabling you to follow along with the market as it develops. Make sure you download the PDF of this report so you can see how our analysis pans out.